Hi everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel. Recently I've been playing around with some Commodore 1541 2 floppy disk drives. Now I did start out playing with this one because it is very crusty on the inside and I actually need to order a part to repair it. So this is not what we're going to be looking at today but it'll likely come up in the future. So I was left with this one. Now I was sort of in the mood to check out some old random floppy disks and see what was on them and everything was going swell for a couple of hours and then suddenly this one stopped working and i was like what the hell why is this why is it so so let's um take a peek inside and maybe we can figure it out all right so let's have a look at what's going on with this drive i'll just tilt it up so you can see the leds on the front so our power light comes on that's normal the drive light has also come on but it is staying on now normally when you power up these drives the drive light will come on for a second and then turn back off and likewise when you turn on the Commodore 64 when it's connected to the drive the drive light will come on and then after a second or two it'll turn back off um, and that's just because the Commodore 64 sends a reset pulse to the drive to tell it to reset. Everything with the Commodore 64 seems fine because the drive is just playing up without the C64 connected. Let's open it up and I've already taken all the screws out of this one. And I'll remove this front part. So you just got to pull this lever off and the front should be able to come off. It's still connected to those LEDs but if I flip this over, there you go, our little spindle motor is still going. And if I power off the drive and power it back on, spindle runs, nothing else happens. Now, at this point, because these motors run off 12 volts and the rest of the logic pretty much runs off 5, I was suspecting an issue with the 5 volt rail but measuring it at this little cap which is just after the switch shows that we've got 5.08 volts if we measure the 12 volt rail we're only seeing 10.85 so obviously the motor is still running so that's going to be drawing a bit of current and possibly dropping our voltage a little bit What we can do, if I disconnect the motors and flip this over, you can now see that that drive light lights up and then turns back off. Our 5 volt rail shouldn't have changed, it's 5.01 so it's gone up slightly. Our 12 volt rail is now 11.79. Now this isn't actually an issue with the motors because they're supposed to run and they're going to draw some current as they're running. The issue is the motors spin on power up and that is not allowing the drive to come out of reset. Now you might be thinking well the 6502 which is the CPU in these little drives because they're like a miniature computer it's only running off 5 volts, so what has the 12 volt rail got to do with anything? Well, if we look at the reset line on the 6502, you can see it's at 0.9 volts, which is logic low. So it's actually currently stuck in reset, which is why our drive light is stuck on and the Commodore 64 doesn't know how to communicate with it. Part of that reset line actually interfaces with the 12 volt side of things and it's through this Sony IC here. This is actually the read write head amplifier but another feature of this chip is that it also senses the 12 volt supply and if the 12 volt supply is below a certain threshold there is an output on here which is this pin here which will give us a logic low if there's not a high enough voltage supply to this Sony IC. So once again, if I remove these drive heads, 
And we have a look at that pin again on this Sony IC. You can now see that there's five volts there and no surprise, our CPU has 4.6 volts, which is enough to bring it out of reset. So the issue is not with our five volt supply at all. It's also not with any of these ICs on the board, including the Sony IC, because it is actually doing its job of sensing the supply voltage that the driver is receiving. And if it's not high enough, it doesn't allow the CPU to come out of reset. That's sort of controlled by some of this other logic. There's an AND gate and an inverter and stuff. Not really important at this point because what we can tell is our 12 volt rail is too low. Nothing on the board seems to be pulling that down. And in fact, if I turn the drive off and we just look at the 12 volt coming out of our power supply, that's our five volts. So 12 volts will be on this side, 11.9. So it's a little under 12. So the issue here is not with our drive at all. It's actually this power supply. This is one of the original Commodore 1541 two power supplies. And similar to the Commodore 64 ones, it's a potted brick. So it does get quite warm, not as bad as the C64 ones, but still not great. So I was at a bit of a loss what to do. I thought maybe if we crack this guy open, maybe we can repair it. Alternatively, we can use a different supply to power this board. Now I do have a bench power supply, but it's only a single output. So in theory, I could use that to power the 12 volt rail and use this to power the five volt rail, but then I'm potentially splitting grounds and that could cause a little bit of a catastrophe if I'm using the ground from the bench power supply and a ground from this connecting together, bad things might happen. I don't know for sure, so I'm not actually gonna try that. What I'm gonna use instead is something that I noticed floating around here that I kind of forgot about. This is a Meanwell PD45A. So it's a AC driven power supply that puts out five volts DC and 12 volts DC. Uh, I think the five volts is rated for 3.2 amps. The 12 volts is rated for two amps. The original little power brick says that the five volts is rated for 700 milliamps and the 12 volts for 500 milliamps. So there's definitely plenty of headroom here. So we don't have to worry about not having enough supply to drive all these components. So what I'm going to do is attempt to hook this up just as a temporary measure to see if the drive works with this power supply. All right, and here we are. It is very janky, but this should work. I couldn't find the right plugs to fit these connectors. So I'm just going with this and I'm just using a figure eight cable for the AC input, which is just connected to standard wall plug. And on the other side, there are just alligator clips. One of them is clipped to one of the ground pins, one to the five volts and one to the 12 volt rail. So obviously this isn't a solution that I'm gonna use in the long term, uh, but it should be enough for us to determine that the power supply is the definite cause. This resistor here is part of our five volt rail and I'm just getting the 12 volt rail at the switch and we've got our ground connected. We're not shorting out anywhere plug it in and see what happens. In fact, I might just remove this drive cover again, just so we can see the LEDs. If I can get that sort of in shot. Right. Powering up. The drive light came on and turned off. That is what we want to see. Let's just try that one more time. That looks good. That is the expected behavior. All right, 
drive is still powered on, I'm just going to carefully plug in the Commodore 64 without disturbing any of this stuff or touching it. There we go. So that is what's supposed to happen. When you turn the Commodore on, you should get a reset signal sent to the drive, which will then do a little mini power cycle, basically. So there is definitely an issue with this brick. Now, as I said, I can't really use this as a power supply for the 15412, at least not in this state. And it is not going to fit inside this brick either. Uh, so seeing as we've got nothing to lose, let's see if we can crack open this brick. Now, usually the best way to attack these is around where the cable goes in. So this is already slightly popped open, probably because it's expanded inside. <laughs> let's see if we can keep that going. That screwdriver is too big. In fact, I might just use a knife just to go around. This might take a while. All right, so that took about 10 minutes. It's sort of, yeah, I did start from this side and just sort of worked my way around. Once you get a little bit of leverage in there, you can go up to a bigger screwdriver and start levering it. The hardest part is just the corners because these things here are actually connected to little posts on the inside that run straight down into that potting stuff. So that stuff is solid, but it is pretty much open. I've just got to do the last little bit to get these posts to pop out or break off. There we go. And they two, three of them came out. That's impressive. All right, here's our power supply. And this stuff is like still kind of almost sticky. In fact, I can leave fingerprints in it. Ew. I didn't destroy anything too much. Didn't hit any of the mains wires. Didn't mar up the case too much. So maybe I can put this back together if we can get it working. Now, just how much am I going to have access to? The board does have some movement, but if the components are really stuck in that potting, it's likely that I'm just going to end up breaking the board if I try and pull it out. Right, so I threw a bunch of different chemicals at this stuff. Uh, IPA, citrus solvent, brake cleaner, contact cleaner, WD-40. Nothing really seemed to get through it. So in the end, I just ended up scratching it away with the screwdriver. And as you can see, I've exposed a lot of the copper under the solder mask, but that's not such a big deal. Now, a couple of interesting spots. There's a solder joint that looks like it's got a bit of a solder dag that's almost bridging the connection to another point next to it. I'm guessing that's probably a capacitor on the other side of that. And one of the voltage regulators, possibly the 12 volt side, depending on how this thing is wired up, may have some bad solder joints. Now, I mean, at this point, this was going in the bin anyway, so it's more just out of curiosity than anything else. But I'm going to reflow these solder joints and just see what happens when we plug it back in and power it on, see if it delivers the correct amount of voltage. I'm guessing that one of the capacitors on the 12 volt rail is probably dried up. But like I said, I'm just sort of, this is more out of curiosity than any, anything else now. And there is did I just get that right? There's part of a leg still stuck in one of those solder joints. That's always quality assurance right there. Yeah, they're still a little bit ugly, but that's what happens when we don't remove the old stuff. All right, let's plug it in and just see what happens, if anything. Will it do nothing at all? Plugging in. 
It does nothing. What a surprise. Let's reveal these things. I just covered them up because there was crap going everywhere. Bring our disk drive back over. Just try and place that where we can see it. Plug her back in. Plug this back into the wall. Here we go. Nah. It is still being stuck in reset. Dare I say our voltages have not changed. We are seeing 5.07 on the 5 volt rail. 10.86 on the 12 volt. I would say the 12 volt supply capacitor has dried up and can't give us a stable voltage. I mean, I could get the, the oscilloscope out and check the ripple, but meh. There's not much point in messing around with this any longer. There's no way I'm going to be able to get that board out without breaking everything off it. So I think this power supply is done. Probably should unplug it. All right, so because I can't help myself, I actually desoldered this board and managed to pop it out. And we can get an idea of what things look like underneath. So this here looks like our bad capacitor. It's probably tricky to see, but it does appear that it's bulging. It's actually sort of crooked as well. I don't know if that's a result of it bulging out, but at least now we can test it out of circuit. And it's showing 5,900 microfarads with an ESR of 1,400 ohms. Um, the one over here should be our good one. And that says, yep, still 5,200 ohms with an ESR of 0.4 ohms. Now there's no chance of getting that cap out and replacing it. And with this kind of power supply, I wouldn't really want to anyway. So um, yeah, that's about it for this poor old power supply which means I will have to source something else and until then I guess I'll just use the SD to IC or the Pi1541 for all of my disk purposes until I find a suitable replacement for this. So I managed to pop the brick out of the box so um, I guess this is going in the bin. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find a power supply that's going to fit in such a tight space. Don't think there's much room to play with. It's about 65 mil wide by about 85 by about 50 mil. So yeah, it might be a challenge to find something that can deliver five and 12 volts and still fit inside this box. But if I do, I'll certainly, um, put out a little video where we re-brick a Commodore 1541 power supply. But I hope you found this interesting. It just shows that sometimes what seems like could be a logic fault can sometimes just be down to a crappy old power supply. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. A big thanks for those who subscribe and like the videos. Leave me a comment with any of your thoughts and I will catch you in the next one. A massive thanks to my patrons, especially the Commander Keen folks. Thanks for watching the Retro Channel. Bye. Mm. Mm. Ugh.